Hello and everyone, welcome back to episode 2 of Sekiro, and if you remember last time, we started off our journey by ultimately losing a fight to Genichiro and losing our arm in the process, and winding up here in this strange shack with this person who seems to be busy carving something. Okay, well, got a bit of information. We don't even know how long we've been here. He just said a while. So, that's good. Guess we better get going. Alright, well, thank you very much, mate. Guess we better go out. We can't draw our sword in here because otherwise we'd be able to attack him, and we don't want to do that. see. His hut seems to be absolutely filled with carved statues of Buddha in varying positions. 
It's doing pretty well for a guy with one arm. すみません。主の命を任せなさい。ただ、あなたを助け、そう仰せつかっています。信任しろとは言いません。ですが、私はアルジの命を果たさねばならない。あなたが持っている約数の教会、それは。元々私が作り上げたものです。屈指として助けてやりましょう。一つ頼みがあります。何？少し顔を見せてください。何？白い技。これは生まれつきです。流人を受けた者に現れるということ。あるいは日差しか。うん。ああ、十分です。無礼をしました。すみません。では。So a strange woman who appears to have created our healing gourd and knows about. The condition that is uh, keeping us alive right now, or rather did keep us alive when we lost against Genitra in that field there. Since we're, you automatically draw your sword once you're in a safe area where you're allowed to. And then we have several pellets, just like last time. Over here is a very important mechanic from the game, if you played any of FromSoft games. This is your bonfire, but here it's a sculptor's idol. As it says here, there are checkpoints. And uh, resting replenishes all your stuff, like um, your healing gourd and your vitality, and anything that can be refilled in your quick items will be refilled as well. But then again, just like every other game, enemies respawn when you do so. So, so we have no reason to right now. Okay. If you'll just give me a moment. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Sorry, that's something we need to take care of. Yes, we don't need this right now, but the sculptor seems to be helping us out, leaving these idols around the place and while well, rescuing us and giving us a new arm. He said there was another strange guy over here. Let's see who it is. Oh boy. So it was like two hits, but Can you 
Hanbei the Undying. So he's, as you said, we can use him for training of various kinds if we have new sword moves that we want to try out or we just want to practice deflecting. You can come to this guy anytime and you can practice with him. So, you can pick various things, you can, you know, practice just attacking, deflecting timing, and we can see what he means by invasion. Just telling you about the step dodge. It's, I mean, it's basically what it tells you here. It doesn't do any posture damage, obviously, but it does get you out of the way. If you don't think you'll be able to deflect running away, it's a perfectly good idea. So, it wants me to evade enemy attacks and then attack in response. I perform three death blows. So, in the middle of a dodge, if you press the attack button, you will then counter-attack. Like so. about safety rolls. If you're knocked over, uh, people will try to take advantage of that, but if you roll across the ground, then you'll get out of the way. You can do it in any direction, back, forward, left or right, and it's very helpful to do. I'm getting out of my range. Very rude of him. Come on. Most enemies would be recovering posture right now, but since he's a tutorial guy, he doesn't do that. That's two. So that's basically how he works. This is the offering box. Nothing so right now, but as it says, items that become unavailable elsewhere, whether it's through progression of the story or something else, then they will end up here. So that means you don't lose anything by accident from just progressing the story. But I will be trying to get everything the normal way anyway. So time to set off properly. And we have our first use of the prosthetic arm, the grappling hook. It gives us little green node points to grapple onto, and if you just press left trigger, off you go. Like so. That was for very creative level design and exploration methods. And we come up and see that lovely sun. Seems like the start of a new day. have another sculptor's idol very helpfully put out for us and as it's telling us here you can travel between the ones you have discovered so if we wanted we could go straight back to the temple where the last one was but that's not necessary right now so if we head up here we could grapple but it's just as well to do wall kicks we have an ungo sugar it allows us to take less damage when getting hit. That's physical damage, not posture damage. There's a different one for posture. Now then, nothing around there. If we 
grapple over there. Grappling is a very helpful method for approaching things in a stealthy manner. Because people don't often expect to see you coming from trees. Here it's talking about taking loot. When enemies die, they will drop things. If you just hold down X, your body will suck it in like a vacuum. There is absolutely no law explanation that covers why he's able to do this, but he is. So, at almost every opportunity possible, you want to look for a way to handle the situation stealthily. Sekiro isn't really a game where you can fight a bunch of enemies at once and win easily. You can do two, maybe three at a push, but more than that, and you will struggle to time everything properly. So, you want to thin their numbers by doing things like this. Although that may have been a bad example since there's no one else around. But if there were other people around, it would be good to get rid of one right away. Here we've got a ceramic shard that if you throw at someone, it, it will grab their attention. So if you want to split someone off in a group, to do the aforementioned strategy of thinning their herd, then it's good for that. And that's everyone taken down. So we can grapple over, or we can go around, like so. And as you may recall from the opening stage, crouching grass gives you excellent stealth. So if we use it to go across this path here, and take this guy out, he would never even remotely saw us coming. That guy has a gun! Now you may be thinking, you can't deflect a gun because it's a bullet. However, you can't do posture damage, but you can block it. You can even perfect block it, like so. Okay. Bad example. And thus is our first death. power that we've been told about. The power to live on. Enemies won't typically expect it, and you can use it to help get the drop on them after a bad situation. The power from Kuro's blood has given us the power to resurrect once. Well, sort of. One charge will always be restored if you rest to the sculptor's idol, and then killing enemies will give you another charge that you can use and if you do, you have to recharge it again. That one will not restore at idols. We have a dog. Sorry, we have to kill the dog. Here it's telling us that you can equip multiple quick items and cycle through them, but I'm fine with just keeping the healing gold where it is for now. Bullets. The best approach with people using guns is to run directly up to them. Okay, maybe zigzag a little bit so you don't get shot and just attack them. Typically they have quite low posture, so you can overwhelm them by just attacking normally. And then we have another idol, which means another checkpoint past those encounters. We'll rest to restore our health and our resurrection node, and then we will carry on. Anyone around here? Always good to keep a lookout. There's a dog. There's two dogs. What the different color arrows mean? The yellow one means that the enemy has noticed something but doesn't know what and is going to investigate. Uh, and the red one means that they can directly see you. If someone has a yellow arrow over their head, uh, you can still stealth kill them. If they have a red one, you cannot. Going down here, give us any tactical advantage whatsoever. Oh, yes, it does actually, I think. I, th I believe we can grapple over somewhere? Or is this just death? Sorry, no, that's just death. Don't jump down there. Don't do what I did. Bad move. So we will grapple up here, although actually, we want to go. No, no, we want to go down there. And. Sneak around in here and grab this. 
the shuriken wheel. A mechanical device made by the mechanical genius Dogen can be fit into the shinobi prosthetic to become a working prosthetic tool. While it is palm sized, a surprising number of shuriken can fit into the wheel as the edges were designed for stacking. A fine example of what can be achieved when one matches mechanical finesse with a shinobi's talent. So this is an example of our prosthetic arm being useful once again. If we head back to the sculptor, which we'll do now, he will be able to attach it to our arm and give us an extra tool with which to fight. ちばは形を変えることができるようになる。形立てならば打ち砕き。素早き敵ならば仕留め打ち。仕込んだ人が増えるだけ敵を殺す術も増えるじゃろう。殺す相手なりにも殺し方を見出した。そういうことじゃ
then you'll be fine, but you can't block them normally. And anything that looks like a grab, you cannot do anything about. Just get out of there. Although maybe you can interrupt them with attacking, but that's risky. But there is one Deathblow instantly down. We'll let him show off some attacks. Although he's very similar to the guy that we fought in the end of. Not the nature though, the other one. There's his sweep. And just like that, he's done. We just obtained a prayer bead. If we get four of those, we can increase our stats. Specifically our health and our posture. And this is a Gourd Seed. If we take that to Emma, she can give us another use of our Healing Flask, or Healing Gourd, rather. Thank you very much. So we can halve how hard the boss is, just by using a little bit of health and being smart about it. Which is an important lesson to learn. Now then, I think I'm going to leave this episode here, as we look out onto this new place to fight through with having just defeated our first real mini boss of the game realistically and thank you all for watching i hope to see you again on the next episode which should be up fairly soon after this one probably another day i'd like to try and get these out daily so until then bye bye